Before I start, I just want to say to everyone up here, you're welcome. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Bill Hader was awesome. No one tells a story like Dateline. Or do they? I prefer Perrier! <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at this Prince of Comedy's most hilarious and heartwarming media moments. Please note, we will be excluding any television and film roles because those already have a list of their own. And be sure to leave your favorite Bill Hader moments in the comments below. All right, let's get to it. Number 10, Point Pleasant Police Department, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. What do you get when you combine two SNL alums known for breaking character? A fake cop drama and a buffet filled with Pepsi pudding and Perrier? A spluttering good time, that's what. Morning, Preston. <laughs> Morning, Pete. You in pain? Your palms covered in plaster. This recurring Tonight Show sketch sees host Jimmy Fallon and one of his guests, in this case Bill Hader, play out a scene from the made-up TV show Point Pleasant Police Department. Looks like a week's pretty packed. Put it in. <laughs> Basically, the two detectives argue while spitting their beverages and bits of food on each other. Reference, point pleasant, police department, and we speak politely to our peers. Not only is it obvious the two are having a blast, but also, in true hater fashion, we hear the comedian sincerely apologize as he's dousing Fallon's face in chocolate pudding and sparkling water. Very perceptive, Pete. Now that's some contagious and lighthearted fun. Number 9. Actor Activity Impressions – The Ellen DeGeneres Show It's no secret that Bill Hader has a superb talent for mimicry, mostly cultivated from his sketch comedy days. So it came as no surprise that he would nail Ellen's impression game without a hitch. Puff the magic dragon, <laughs> uh, huffed and puffed and then kept puffing. Picked at random, Hader had to perform different celebrities doing random activities, from Jack Nicholson running a lemonade stand. And if you don't order a lemonade for me, you're gonna go right to hell. <laughs> or Harry Styles and a personal trainer. No, you could put more on than that. <laughs> no, go ahead, you could put more on that. No, do it. To John Oliver at a hip hop concert. Please don't do that. Oh, ouch, oh, ouch, <laughs> please, I can't jump that high in the air, but I can hold one hand like this. I can do that, if that, if you can see me. Up, 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 Kendrick! <laughs> Not only did Bill get to flex his uncanny caricature abilities, but we also got a taste of his impressive improv skills. What more could an audience ask for? I can play the guitar, <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> Number eight, New York accent impressions, Jesus and Mero. If you can make two Bronx natives double over in laughter with a couple of hilariously accurate NYC accents, then your name must be Bill Hader. You got like some girl doing all your stunts? <laughs> Although the comedian no longer resides in the Big Apple, his impressions are far from rusty, as proven during his appearance on Jesus and Mero. I was just like looking at movies because there's all these movies you couldn't get mm -hmm. in Tulsa, and I was like, oh, I was looking. And the guy behind the counter went, Yo, Stretch, you gonna write anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but the trio seem to be having a blast riffing off each other, goofing around with different jokes and voices. They almost abandon the interview questions entirely. Folding so, in on itself, the table's like, a Arr. serious question, Bill. Yeah? What is your artistic process like? Oh, f <laughs> <laughs> It seems that no matter where Bill Hader gets a case of the giggles, good times and great energy are sure to follow. Number 7. His Reddit AMA Reddit If you have any doubts that Bill Hader is the sweetest and most down-to-earth celebrity ever, then you should go and take a look at his Reddit AMA from 2013. Not many famous faces would take time out of their day to interact with their fans, let alone dedicate an entire Reddit page to their questions and queries. But Hader is a different breed. Some of the highlights include Hader addressing a Tumblr page dedicated to his poor wardrobe choices, or lack thereof, tips for fans on how to respectfully approach him in public, his admiration for former SNL castmates, and the time he revealed the ending of Titanic to a theater full of sorority girls. Now that is a spoiler of blockbuster proportions. Number 6. His Arnold Schwarzenegger Impression with Conan O'Brien 
It may come as a surprise to some, but Bill Hader started out as a production assistant in Hollywood before discovering he had a knack for comedy. But one of the films he worked on featured action hero and former governor of California Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's clear that Hader's subconscious was taking notes. And bugs are coming around, they're like, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> Funny Man has shared his impressions with talk show host Conan O'Brien more than once, and each time his delivery of the former bodybuilder was spot on. Most of the interview clips have had a deepfake edit makeover, pasting Arnold's face onto Bill's, but they are shockingly effective. I'm four and a half father. <laughs> you got to get out of here. Get out of this, the bombing there. Get out. While simultaneously creepy and hilarious, they only add to the performance making them one of the best impressions around. And that was the big line in that movie was, open up the door, there's a bomb in there. <laughs> Number five, when he showed us how much he loves his children, variety. The only thing that would make us adore this funny man even more is finding out he's a devoted family man to boot. Hater made the planet collectively aw when an article for Variety revealed he had barely seen his three daughters during an entire summer due to an extremely busy work schedule. The fact of the matter was so upsetting that the star apparently broke down during the interview. He quickly picked up the pieces, however, and joked about it moments later, telling the reporter he planned on staying home the following year, stating, quote, they can see me all day if they want. They can really get sick of me. Now that is a great dad. Number four, Star Wars impressions, Conan. Even if he wasn't a super fan of the sci-fi series, he is, we're pretty sure these imitations would be spot on either way. During a 2014 appearance on Conan, Bill and the talk show host discussed the then upcoming Star Wars trilogy series and what Bill would do for a role in J.J. Abrams' film. <laughs> It was the perfect setup for him to start executing his well-crafted and hysterically accurate impressions of a dying Jabba the Hutt and Tauntaun. <laughs> Although he didn't end up getting cast as any of those characters in The Force Awakens, Hader was able to get the next best thing and served as a vocal consultant for the droid BB-8. The Ilenium system. Yeah, the Ilenium system, that's the one. Get us there as fast as you can. I'll drop you to Panema Terminal. Number three, the president of Hollywood, Comedy Central roast of James Franco. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Hollywood. If you were to combine multiple stereotypes about the entertainment industry and package it into human form, this would be the result. Before I start, I just want to say to everyone up here, you're welcome. Which is exactly what Bill must have planned when he agreed to perform at James Franco's roast. Looking forward to your new show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Funny cops. You're always pushing the envelope, Andy. <laughs> Decked out in a white wig, red tracksuit, and 70s shades, Hader performed his bit as the president of Hollywood, ripping into each person on stage with one zinger after another. Aziz, I admire how you've never taken the stereotypical Indian roles. I just want to tell you that if you did, you would make so much more money. <laughs> Not only was his delivery impeccable, but also his material, a perfect combination of edgy and goofy, never fell flat and had the entire room roaring with laughter until the very end. But I know it hasn't always been easy for you, James. You overcame a crippling childhood affliction known as dumb face. <laughs> Number two, revealing what made him break on SNL, Late Night with Seth Meyers. As previously mentioned, Hader was often known for breaking character during his time on Saturday Night Live. 210 episodes. I was nervous for every one of them, and I'm nervous now! <laughs> After hosting an episode in 2018, he opened up on Late Night with Seth Meyers about two particular instances during the evening and why they had him cracking up uncontrollably. He said, uh, my girlfriend, <laughs> because my girlfriend works at Yoshinoa Beef Bowl. <laughs> well, the first moment was obviously during one of his wacky Stefan skits. The second happened when he played a geriatric old man on a motorized wheelchair. You know what? 
No. <laughs> Hater ended up not only backing into some props during the scene, but also dragging cast member Melissa Villasenor along with them. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This one is... <laughs> In Bill's defense, however, the sheer ridiculousness of that sketch would have had anyone tearing up with laughter. Well, it was bad because I backed up and I knew I hit something, but I didn't know what it was. And I could hear Melissa behind me going, it's me. <laughs> Haters breaking is definitely part of why he's so awesome because he's having as much fun as we are. But there was one time that he was even more relatable than that, and we've put it at number one. So let's look through some honorable mentions, and then we'll see the top time Bill Hader was awesome. Lorne Michaels, Conan, a hilariously dark imitation of SNL's famed creator. I went to Kansas City um, with Alec and Marcy uh, to try to get <laughs> BTK killer off death row. <laughs> the underdog off-camera with Sam Jones. Reminds us that the path to success is not always the one we planned. Well, I moved out here to be a filmmaker, to make movies and, and write movies. And, right. And nothing was happening for, you know, six years. Being open about his mental health struggles, Child Mind Institute. Hader offers a candid account of his lifelong anxiety along with some sage advice. Instead of pushing that thing away and trying to fight it, I would just go, hey, oh, hey, buddy. You know, it was like a little uh, monkey, and I would just kind of go, okay, here, let's sit on my shoulder, sit on my shoulder, let's hang out. Chatting it up with John Mulaney, the 92nd Street Y. Watching these two SNL greats shoot the breeze would make anyone's day. I was lucky enough to find a guy like John that when I would perform in one of our sketches, it was kind of like, I'm just performing to John. Like, I just want to make John laugh. Oh, thank you. You know, honestly, like... <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, meeting Keith Morrison, Sunday Today with Willie Geist. A surprise introduction to one's idol would be a surreal experience for anyone, including a big name like Bill Hader. It's a well-known fact that Hader is an avid fan of Dateline, along with the show's longtime correspondent, Keith Morrison, having parodied the latter in multiple SNL sketches. Yeah! Diego confessed, but let's ignore that, because this is an hour show, so we've got to stretch this out. After being invited to visit one of the program's editing bays during an interview on Sunday Today with Willie Geist, Hater is beyond delighted when the journalist pops into the office for an impromptu meeting. I don't know how you get better than Keith Morrison! I knew he was gonna be here! I knew he was gonna be here! Oh my god, wow, oh my gosh. Hater is visibly starstruck and overjoyed at encountering such an icon. Uh, Larry David, there's so many of us, we're like massive fans oh, of yours awesome. and we'll always be that like, that you see you what Keith good. Morrison, I Thank mean, you. you're just the... <laughs> I'm super... <laughs> <laughs> we can't help but collectively share in his infectious delight as we watch the comedian turn into a total fanboy in front of a true crime legend. No one tells a story like Dateline. Or do they? <laughs> That's so rad. <laughs> <laughs> what is more relatable and awesome than getting super excited when you meet one of your idols? Exactly. So be sure to let us know in the comments which time you think Bill Hader was most awesome. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.